Wash sales can be very confusing for stock and option traders. In this video, I'll make wash sales seem very simple and clear. And I encourage you to watch till the very end of this video because there I'm going to show you how to legally avoid getting hit with a watch sale rule, thus being able to keep more of your hard earned cash in your pocket instead of having to send it off to the government. But first, what is the wash sale rule? The wash sale rule is an IRS regulation that prevents you from taking a tax deduction on the loss of a stock or option trade if you bought and sold the same security or something very similar to the security or stock 30 days before or 30 days after the actual trade. That's a total of 61 days. This rule applies to stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and options. It also applies, say, for example, if you have multiple accounts that you trade in, including a taxable and non-taxable account. If you close out a position for a loss, but within 30 days open a very similar position in a retirement account, that too could trigger the wash sale rule, and you would not be able to write that loss off. This rule also applies to your spouse's accounts. Let's look at an example here. Let's say that on February 1st, you bought 100 shares of Coca-Cola at $60 per share. Over the next two months, Coca-Cola declined in value so that on April 1st, you decide to get out and you sell your 100 shares for $50 per share. If you haven't done any other trades in Coca-Cola for the previous and next 30 days after you close that position now, then you'd have a $10 per share loss that you could use to offset gains on your tax return. However, let's say that two weeks after you close your Coca-Cola position on April 15th, you began to feel bullish on it again. You believed it was going back up in price, so you bought 100 new shares at $55 per share. However, over the next two months, it again declines by $10 per share, so that on June 15th, with Coca-Cola trading at $45 per share, you decide to get out. The problem is that since you traded in this new position on April 15th, and 30 days had not passed since you closed out the first Coca-Cola position, you would not be able to write off the $10 per share loss on the position that you were in from February 1st to April 1st. However, a $10 per share loss would be added to your cost basis in the new position that you entered on April 15th. So even though you paid $55 per share for Coca-Cola back on April 15th, your cost basis will actually be at $55 per share plus the $10 per share loss for the previous position, thus producing a cost basis of $65 per share. So our cost basis is $65 per share, and we just sold it on June 15th for $45 per share. That means that we have a $20 per share loss in this position. If we do no other trades in Coca-Cola for the 30 days before and after we exit this position, then we'd be able to use that $20 per share times 100 share or $2,000 loss against other gains. However, let's say that on July 13th, which is 28 days after you close the Coca-Cola position, so notice that we haven't waited the 30 days, and therefore since we're trading in Coca-Cola before that 30-day period is up, the wash sale rule will again apply to us. Let's say that we buy back Coca-Cola at $50 per share on July 13th. Let's say that we hold this until towards the end of the year. Now it's December 20th. Unfortunately, Coca-Cola is now trading at $40 per share. Remember, we paid $50 per share for Coca-Cola in the most recent transaction on July 13th. And remember that we're carrying forward a $20 per share loss. So our cost basis is actually $70 per share. If we sell Coca-Cola on December 20th for $40 per share, we'll be showing a $30 per share loss or a $3,000 loss on the 100 shares that we've been trading. If we didn't do any of the trades in Coca-Cola for the 30 days before and the 30 days after December 20th, or for that 61 day window of time, then we'd be able to show that loss this year. However, what if we felt really strongly that Coca-Cola was going to go back up after the first of the year, but we still wanted to take advantage of this loss to write off against other gains? Could we do that? The answer is absolutely we could. Stay tuned in because in just a few minutes, I'm going to tell you exactly how you could do that. But before I get to that trick, let's look at the same scenario, but let's throw option trading into the mix. Let's start with a simple example first. Let's say that, for example, that you're using my favorite strategy of selling cash secured put options. Let's say that you've been able to continually roll your cash secured put option out every month in Coca-Cola. However, the problem is that Coca-Cola is going down in price, so your cash secured put option is going farther and farther in the money. Let's say, for example, that on October 1st, you sold a $50 cash secured put option and received a dollar per share for it. Fast forward 30 days to November 1st, and Coca-Cola has declined in price, so that it costs you $2 to buy that option back. You received $1 up front, but it costs you $2 to buy it back. That means we have a $1 per share loss on that option. If we hadn't done any trades for the previous and the next 30 days in Coca-Cola, then we'd be able to show that $1 per share as a loss and thus write it off against other gains. However, let's say that you use the strategy that we do, which is to typically to roll this option out. So you bought the expiring option back for $2 per share, but sold the next month's option for $2.50 per share. 
thus you're able to pocket an additional 50 cents per share. If we continue to roll this option, even the position continues to go against us, we would not be able to use the loss on the option that we close out until we do no more trades in the stock for at least 30 days. So that's an obvious example of when a wash sell would apply to option trading. However, let's look at a situation in which we're trading in a stock, but then we switch over to options. Let's say that we own Coca-Cola and we end up selling the outright stock for a loss. So you no longer own stock of Coca-Cola, but say that you then buy or sell an option that's fairly similar to the stock. For example, let's say that you had owned Coca-Cola stock and you sold it for a loss, but then you bought a call option. That call option should go up in value if Coca-Cola goes up in value. Since you bought that option, it most likely triggered the wash sell rule because you would receive similar benefit from owning that call option than if you had owned the stock. Or let's say that again, you own the stock and you sold it for a loss, but then you did one of my favorite techniques, which is you sold a cash secured put option in Coca-Cola. If that cash secured put option is deep in the money, it will most likely trigger the wash sell rule. This applies even if the option is never exercised. The reason is that the seller of a put option that is deep in the money, it receives very similar benefit to the owner of outright stock. If the underlying stock goes up, the put option's value that you sold goes down. So you'd be able to buy it back at a lower price than what you initially sold it at. The same benefit happens with outright stock. If the stock goes up in value, then you win. Since the characteristics are similar in that you receive benefit from the stock going up, Swapping out outright stock ownership with an in the money cash secure put option will most likely trigger the wash sell rule. Something you want to remember about the wash sell rule is that there's a 61 day window that you need to really keep an eye on. 30 days before you close a position out and 30 days after you close a position out. If you do a trade that has similar benefits to the one you closed out, then the wash sell rule will most likely be triggered. But what about when you buy options? Let's say for example that you're bullish on a stock, so you buy a call option. If you close that out and then buy another call option within that 61 day window, then it will trigger a wash sell. And that's the case even though you may be showing a loss on the first call option you bought. However, because you rolled the option and didn't allow the minimum time to pass, you will still trigger the wash sell rule. Yes, your cost basis and a loss on the first call option will be added on top of the cost basis of the second call option that you bought, but you will not be able to write that loss off until you've exited the position altogether for at least 30 days. One more important point to note is that when calculating your holding period, once you've exited the position completely for at least the 61 required days to avoid the wash sale, the holding period of the underlying stock will include the holding period of all the previous transactions that were counted as wash sales. So if combined, you're in a position for over one year, then it could substantially change the amount of taxes that you would have to pay. So the question is, how can we close out a losing position, be able to take advantage of that loss to write off against some of our gains, but continue to trade in the same underlying company all while not triggering a wash sale. By the way, if you want to be a more profitable stock and option trader, please do yourself a favor, hit the subscribe button and bell notification. If you're finding value in this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up like button. We can legally avoid triggering a wash sale by trading not in the stock itself, but an ETF in which your stock makes up a substantial portion of that ETF. For example, let's keep going with our Coca-Cola position here. If we Google what ETF is Coca-Cola in, we find that by clicking at this very top link, that there are at least 80 ETFs that have Coca-Cola within its top 15 holdings. If you look at the weighting of these ETFs, you see that the top one with the ticker symbol IECS or iShares Evolved US Consumer Staples ETF, you see that if you look at the far right column at the red arrow, that Coca-Cola makes up 11.9% of this ETF. However, when I pulled this ETF up, Notice in the blue box that the average volume is only 1,211 shares traded over the past 10 days. That volume is not nearly enough for us to want to trade in this ETF. So going back to the ETF list, let's look at the next best one. Notice that the second one down, the one now in the blue box, is ticker symbol IYK, which is the iShares US Consumer Staples ETF. Notice at the red arrow that Coca-Cola makes up 11.24% of this ETF. Well, is that ETF's volume any better? Here you see in the blue box that it's a lot better. On average, over 109,000 shares are traded over the past 10 days. Notice when we look at the top 10 holdings of this ETF that Coca-Cola is actually the second largest position behind Procter & Gamble. Each trade is saying that Coca-Cola makes up 11.12% of this overall ETF. So far, so good, right? But now the big question is, does this ETF tend to move in a similar fashion to Coca-Cola? Here you see a chart of Coca-Cola along with this ETF. The ETF is the candlesticks and Coca-Cola is the yellowish orange color line. Notice where the red arrow is, that when both of them had a decline, Coca-Cola tended to decline more than the ETF. 
Conversely, notice that the purple arrow in the upper right, that when they tended to have an advance, it seems like sometimes Coca-Cola would advance farther. So we see that Coca-Cola tends to have a little more volatility than this ETF. But overall, they tend to move together. If you had a big loss in Coca-Cola that you wanted to take advantage of, you could consider exiting your position towards the end of the year and trade an equivalent size position in this ETF. You would just want to give yourself at least 30 days after you close your position on Coca-Cola, and then you can swap right back into Coca-Cola, thus keeping the party going. In this video, I did everything I could to give you the most accurate and up-to-date information. However, I strongly encourage you to get the advice of a licensed tax professional to make sure that everything I discuss in this video applies to you and is still correct. If you'd like to be a part of a group of traders that every day are striving to minimize their losses and increase their wins, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see how we use options to turn losing positions back into winners, check out the video series at the link above and description below entitled Option Repair Strategies. In that video series, I show you real life examples of how we turn some devastatingly terrible losing positions back into winners using stock and option trading. I know it will help you do the same in your positions, so please check it out. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.